Let me show you how to counter all main play styles in Tennis Clash, a sports game published by Wi-Fi Studios. So when I talk about the main play styles, I mean the counter puncher style using Kaito, and we will see two matches against this style. The powerful serve big forehand style using Victoria, we will see two matches as well. The volley style using Diana, we will see one match, and the aggressive base liner style using Victoria, and we will see one match. So I hope that my experience in Tennis Clash that has allowed me to enter the top 100 global ranking can be helpful to you through the recommendations that I provide in this video. So we will start now with two matches where I play against two counterpuncher opponents. The first one is a very offensive counterpuncher and the second one plays much more defensively. So I played the first match versus a top 10 player named Halep. This is a top player that I respect a lot. He had given me so many tennis lessons in Tour 7 when I was still having lower stats and trophies. I had improved my game a lot after having played so many matches versus him. So as you are going to see, this player is playing very offensively. His style is officially counter-puncher. That means defensive base liner because he uses Kaito, who is a counter-puncher character in Tennis Clash. But in reality, his style is more similar to a very aggressive base liner style. So as you can see, with a low serve, you are put in a difficult position right after you serve by a strong return. In that case, just return as quickly as possible to the other corner of your opponent's court and position your character right near the center of the baseline to get ready for the next hit. And you can place your character closer to the corner where your opponent is very probably going to hit the cross-court strike. That way you will run less to return his stroke and will have much less risk to be outflanked. So on your opponent's serve, which will be weak because he's playing with Kaito, take the most advantage of the weak serve to deliver a strong return or cross-court drop shot that will outflank him. We will see it again in slow motion. Your opponent will try to return this drop shot with difficulty and you will just have to follow up with a big stroke to win the point. So I like to use this combo cross-court drop shot plus strong stroke follow-up because it unsettles the opponent a lot, you know. He will not know much where you are going to hit the next time he serves because he can hit a strong return down the line, a cross-court drop shot or a big cross-court stroke towards the other corner. That makes three possible spots and we have to guess where you are going to hit that may be very unsettling for him. So you can do just that actually. You unsettle your opponent by changing the spot where you are going to hit on your next return. Instead of hitting a cross-court drop shot, just hit a strong down the line forehand that will outflank your opponent like I'm showing in this slow motion just then. And letting go, you will have the possibility to dictate the rally afterwards because his return will be weak. Of course, there will be points when you can really do nothing to counter. They happen mostly after your weak serve. So if your opponent hits a very strong return in a spot very far from where your character is positioned, well, that's almost impossible to reach even with a choker court. Never mind, keep focus on the match in that case. So why should you not bother? Well, because it will be your opponent's turn to serve afterwards and will come the opportunity for you to win the points to counterbalance. So here, you're seeing the slow motion showing how I wrong foot my opponent. So one of the best thing to do to outflank your opponent is to wrong foot him. Whenever he thinks he should run to the right side of his court because you are very probably going to hit there, just hit the opposite side. That will wrong foot him. He will have to make a U-turn to try and catch this shot and return a weak shot in consequences or doing um, an unforced error because he's losing balance. Then you just have to stay focused to end the rally. You should try to read your opponent's play pattern as well. If you know that whenever you serve to his left service box, he likes to hit the right corner of your baseline, then just be prepared to move your character to the right corner of your baseline. You have nothing to lose. Either you guess it's right and you will have a huge advantage over your opponent having a head start to hit a strong return towards the opposite corner, or you guess wrong and anyway, you will have had a very hard time to catch this ball if you were far from it. So yeah, you have nothing to lose and a lot to gain by anticipating where your opponent is going to hit the return after your weak serve. So whenever you do a long catch, try to return the ball to one of the two corners if possible, instead of simply putting back the ball on the court. That may invert the situation, making your defensive shot an offensive one and you will be able to hit the winner on the following stroke because your opponent was outflanked. So whenever the match is going to last a long time, both players will have a reduced stamina. A bit like here, like you are seeing right here now on the screen. You see that both stamina, uh, the stamina of both players is low. 
All right? Well, at that moment, try at all costs to shorten the rallies. Really, that's very important. Try to hit one or two shots max after the serve to win the points because you will have no more stamina to run to catch the balls afterwards. So that means you will have to take risk, hit very strong down the line, four hands, or hit risky cross court drop shots. You have a low stamina anyway, so your best chance is to shorten the rallies as much as possible. Don't try to return the ball just for the sake of returning the ball, or return the ball to win the point. That's totally different, and that requires another mindset, another mental strength. So especially on the match point, you really, you really can take risks. That's very fun. You will see that. So, of course, your experienced opponent is going to think the same thing. So, by the very end of the match, it will be a battle of mental strength and anticipation more than a battle of stats because with depleted stamina for both players, stats will be almost insignificant. High agility doesn't help anymore to long catch and the player who is going to crack first under the pressure is not going to win the match. That's simple. So, this is a second match versus a much more defensive counterpuncher, a defensive baseliner in the pure tradition. The shots of this uh, player is um, uh, are softer and risk less to be um, unforced errors. He generally tries to be accurate rather than to take risks hitting strong cross court or down the line strokes. So you can achieve those soft and accurate shots by swiping more slowly on your phone screen. By making slower swipe moves, you are less likely going to commit unforced errors. So this kind of opponent will defend while waiting for his opponent to commit the unforced errors first. This is another strategy that can work too, especially against players who don't have a lot of patience. So against uh, this kind of counterpuncher, very defensive ones. Simply use the classic windshield wiper technique. One big stroke to the left corner, then one other big stroke to the right corner, and so forth, and so on. And sometimes you can diversify by hitting several strokes towards the same corner to try to wrong foot your opponent who thinks that you are going to hit the opposite corner and who is running to this corner to anticipate. So the choker court strings is very helpful for this kind of match that couldn't last longer than expected. Unless you can shorten the rallies, of course. The long catch ability of the choker courts and its small stamina shield, when I say small, it's smaller uh, compared to before the, the big update of 7th of May 2020. The, the, the long catch ability and its small stamina shield are very helpful after the big update. So I'm playing basically with it uh, almost all the time now. So of course, the long catch can just allow you to extend the rally to have an extra chance to win it. It will not do miracle. If you're too tired to run to catch the next return of your opponent, then you will be definitely outflanked and lose the point anyway. So let's see now two matches again, two big serve strong forehand opponents. In the first match, you will see that my opponent has more agility, but a much weaker backhand, so this is a one-handed style. And in the second match, you will see that the opponent has a more balanced build, but a lower agility. So because one-handed players who have a weak backhand will expect you to hit on a backhand most of the time, try to wrong foot them by hitting on their forehand now and then. You will see that it works quite well. But if it doesn't work, never mind, keep focus of course, other opportunities will come to wrong foot them. Remember that their agility is not very high, so if you wrong foot them properly, they generally don't have time to get to catch the ball especially if they don't take the choker cores to have a long catch. Like here, my opponent has, he's playing only with the Maestro Monty. So even then, even with a choker core, they will return a weak stroke that you can easily handle to end the rally. So of course, whenever you have the possibility, try and return on your opponent's weak hand, that is often the back hand, like here. He will return then a surf stroke that you can smash easily. Afterwards, his returns will be even weaker and then you can toy with your opponent by making soft drop shots that he can't catch being too far away. So now and then, uh, during the rallies, try to make drop shots, soft one, like this one, that will surprise your opponent making him run to the net. Afterwards, you will just have to follow up with a big stroke or another drop shot 
it's up to you and your mood if you want to toy with your opponent or not. So you can note that after the big update, it is easier to counter power servers since agility of all players has been buffed, so it's easier to catch these serves. And that means that the strong serves are not as effective as before the big update. All right, let's see the second match where the opponent has lower agility but uh, a better backhand. So that is the stats for the first match. Right now, this is the second match 72 serve, 69 forehand, and 52 backhand, which is better than the first opponent. So here again, try to return your opponent's serve on his weakest hand, which is the backhand, like that. So when you serve, try and serve towards your opponent's backhand, but it's generally useless because your serve is weak anyway. So you will have to anticipate. Try and see where your opponent likes to return your serve. And of course, the drop shots, like the one that I have just made, still are the best weapon to end the rally very fast versus a power serve having low agility. And when that doesn't work, don't mind, just keep focus. So don't forget to hit your opponent's backhand in priority during the rally whenever there is an opportunity, like here, and to end the point afterwards. So I remind you that I have made a tutorial explaining how to um, hit drop shots and this is available on Gameplay365 channel. So take a look at it and you will see how I do the drop shots like this one. So obviously after a drop shot, a cross court drop shot that outflanked your opponent, like here, be present at the corners where your opponent is trying to return a desperate stroke there. You just have to be present at the corner and you will do that just fine if you have the choker cords. Then you will simply have to hit the return towards the empty court because your outflanked opponent is still very far from where you are going to hit. So now we are going to see a match against a volley player having a very high agility of 93 based on Kaito and not Diana. I don't show two matches for this volley style because there are fewer players using it in Tour 1 to 6 after the big update of 7th of May 2020. Fewer than the counter puncher and the power serve strong forehand styles. So this opponent has chosen Kaito clearly because he has much more agility and stamina than with Diana, the normally preferred character for this volley style. So there are several things you can do to counter the volley players having huge agility. On the serve of your opponent, try to return a cross court forehand or backhand, depending on here again on your best hand to surprise him, because he generally expects you to hit the forehand down the line instead, which is easier to execute than the cross court shot. And because he is surprised, he has a very high chance to commit an unforced error while trying to return that cross court drop shot. So you can also hit big forehands or backhand if it's your main force as powerfully as possible towards the two corners of the baseline. You choose your preferred corner and hit your best stroke towards this area. You don't mind about the side where your opponent is weak because most of the time all those huge agility and high volley stats of players have very weak forehand and backhand so they will have a very hard time countering your big forehand and backhand. You can, you should as well hit the ball to make it slant to as close to the sidelines as possible. Whether you choose to hit a cross court winner, as we explained previously, or powerful forehand down the sideline, just try and make this straight and swat fast swipe that will make the ball land very close to the sideline either side. Why? Because your opponent has to choose one side to counter your strokes or will place himself at the center of the court close to the net. So if you can succeed in hitting the ball towards the two corners of the baseline as close as possible to the sideline, then the ball will have a very high potential to be out of reach for your opponent. And for the end, let's see a match against an aggressive baseliner based on Victoria who has decided to put a lot of points on stamina. I don't show two matches for this um, aggressive baseliner style because there are fewer players using it in Tour 1 to 7 than the counter puncher and the power serve strong forehand styles. So the recommendations that I would give to counter the aggressive baseliner style are very similar to the ones that I gave to counter the count counter puncher style because actually a lot of players using Kaito are playing with him as an aggressive baseliner having higher agility and stamina than Victoria.
So the windshield wiper technique still works with now and then several strokes towards the same corner to try to wrong foot the opponent. And most of all, stay strong mentally. Don't lose focus when you are led by 0, 3 or 1, 4 or 2, 5 by your opponent. Stay in the match to come back and win it. Don't say to yourself that it's over. A match is never over in Tennis Clash until you see the end of match screen. So your windshield wiper method may just need some time before it works. So now and then you can also hit the cross court drop shot followed by a strong stroke combo. You have to take risk anyway to come back. So don't be afraid to, to take risk. By taking risk, you will unsettle your opponent and show him that you are mentally strong. He will feel that we will not be so easy to beat you. The mental side of the game is very important in Tennis Clash. For me, it's quite significant actually and can almost counterbalance sometimes a lack of high stats. So of course, a strong mental can help you come back more easily than if you are giving up too early. So never lose focus, stay strong, don't shiver, don't tremble, make your opponent doubt. That's easy said than done, of course. But if you don't stay strong mentally in this game, who is going to do that for you? You have to ask this question. Okay, so obviously if your opponent is choosing a, a, a string which is different from the choker court, it's even easier because, uh, well, the Cyberan wire is, has been now after the big update and the choker court gives you a, a small stamina shield which is better and that's easier to have flank your opponent where, when you have more stamina and when he doesn't have a lot of stamina left like in this match at the end you clearly see that uh, he doesn't have any stamina left and He wouldn't have avoided that if he had chosen the Joker Court. I'm pretty sure of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me show you how to counter all men play styles in Tennis Clash, a sports game published by Wildlife Studios. We have seen recommendations to counter the counter puncher style, the strong serve, big forehand style, the volley style, and the aggressive base liner style. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel Gameplay 365 to stay tuned for new videos of Tennis Clash. Thank you a lot for your support, and see you soon on Gameplay 365. Bye-bye.